I'm Olivia Higgins and you're watching Playing With Fire, where we cover the hottest topics right now in the investment world. Today we are with Ming Feng from Sidley and he is the head of marketing. Hi Ming Feng. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Maybe you can tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself. Okay, very fun story. So I actually <laughs> left the corporate world to join CD as an intern mm -hmm. about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think today uh, CD has grown into one of Singapore's largest personal finance yes, community. Yes, absolutely. Right. The topic for today, the future of personal finance, maximizing online trading and the rise of the new economy. I think this is very important, especially how we're finding ways to cushion ourselves against market volatility. So with Sidley, you guys have been uh, a leader in this space for personal finance. Uh, tell me more about the Sidley Fest. Oh, don't get me started. I'm super <laughs> excited about it because I'm actually the, the program I see for the festival. Right. Yeah, I, I think we have been doing this for three years. And mm -hmm. if you've been following us every year, we want to ensure that Singaporeans uh, can spend one or two days mm -hmm. at a festival. So this year, we are actually having a bit more forward-looking uh, content. Uh, we are going to deep dive into like EV, electric vehicles. Love it. Uh, cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah. And, of course. And like opportunities in the crypto mm. space. And also a lot on, uh, say, ESG, real estate investing. Mm. But also we are not going to forget the fact that uh, some of the fundamentals, personal finance topic will still be there. Mm. Uh, like in two days, I'm, I'm, we are hoping that Singaporeans can make smarter financial decisions just after two days. Like mm. from a nook, they will become a, a pro. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hopefully. Okay. In two yeah. days. <laughs> That's but quite so, prominent faces. Yeah, on and I know I know Gavin from uh, Mumu is going to be there. Yes. Also. So really excited. So he's he's going to be uh, on my panel, and and I'm really like looking forward to having a conversation with him about optimizing investment portfolio. Mm. Uh, Kathy will, will be mm. will be uh, uh, on, and we have ministers such as uh, Minister Alvin Tan. Absolutely. So I think uh, everyone can look forward to really. Uh, for no better words, a uh, uh, list of power pack speakers, mm. I would say. Yes, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. In terms of the rise of new online brokerage systems, right? How is that different mm. from the traditional ways? Yeah, so that's, that's really interesting. I think when we talk about traditional ways, I, I'm trying to like, recall how my dad used to invest, yeah. where they have to like, either head down to the branch to buy a share mm. or like, you know, call uh, a broker to mm. assist them with their tricks. And that's, that's a really like, long and troublesome process. Mm -hmm. But right now you with, with this new online brokerage coming in with all the mobile apps and everything is like so seamless. Mm -hmm. You can trade on the move, uh, even when you are in the toilet and stuff. I mean there are occasions that do that also. So I think the frequency <laughs> of investments mm -hmm. starts to increase over time. Mm -hmm. Plus I think with all these online platforms there's like so much information mm -hmm. out there to help you with your with your investments. Right. Yeah. Before CD, I think a lot of uh, personal finance uh, information is very top down. Where mm -hmm. you know, like uh, advisors will come to you and say, "No, you must do this. This is the way for you." So I think with CD, what we are trying to do is to have a decentralized approach mm -hmm. because I mean, mm -hmm. everyone's finances is different. Sidley's um, target audience, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's also quite aligned to what Mumu faces with yes. um, their community channels. And looking at the topics of market volatility, what are some habits that are in place right now to help people um, cushion such changes? Let's talk about maybe like investing habits or, yeah. or uh, on a platform side of things. I think we noticed today that there's no really like loyalty, loyalty when it comes mm. to Singapore. So uh, people are having like multiple mm. uh, brokerage accounts. Even like when they open up their wallet, there's like four or five different credit cards from different banks. Absolutely. Yeah, correct. So I think it's a very competitive landscape. If you come in with the lowest fee, uh, you win the market. If you come in with the best user experience, you win the market and stuff. Yeah, but I think when it comes to volatility, we know that uh, people are more open to, to, to discuss what's happening in the market now. Uh, unlike the past, I know during our dad's era, they are more like uh, my finances is my finances. You're not gonna know anything about it, but mm. you don't know my people, next move exactly. And, <laughs> and if you, it's like a taboo topic, right? You say, uh, if you were to ask him like, hey, dad, what what insurance plan you have, they'll be like, no, I'm not gonna tell you anything about that. <laughs> yeah, but I think people today they are more mm. open to share, mm. and I think that accelerates a lot of learning for for the community. So. Mm. Mm -mm. 
we're also talking about the new economy. So perhaps maybe what? How do you define that now right. with personal ha- uh, finance habits? Everything is a bit uh, still in progress, I would say. But usually, uh, if you look at the dot com era, right, it is this little bit of uncertainty that mm. will give rise to the next next thing. Mm-hmm. And and I'm actually quite. Uh, I'm actually following the the progress of Web three quite closely, also because I I somehow think that that might be the next future, uh, because also everyone's talking about cryptocurrency these days. Yes. Yeah, are you investing in cryptocurrencies? Ah uh, <laughs> yes, but I'm mm-hmm. extra careful. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> why yeah, we have to be extra careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. And I think when it comes to metaverse, we are also looking at a futuristic world. I, I support that because I'm futurist. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I think so the best part is you can break up and then yes. you can just. Uh, take a call from your bed. <laughs> in terms of confidence, where does your confidence lie in the market right now? We are having one of the longest dip uh, in the in the stock market. So most mm. of us are probably having like uh, a portfolio in red. The uh, central bank mm. uh, is probably not going to lend so much support. We are starting to see uh, a little bit of a. Uh, shift in mindset i would say uh, in the past we we used to say like boomer stocks you know stocks that have been like around for very long and and um basically our generation feels that it's a boomer stock per se but these <laughs> companies now have a have a, a higher value now mm. like like it's, it mm. starts to become into somebody's portfolio because they feel that stability somehow can be a good thing of course i'm i uh, do hope that the war ends soon but i think uh in market wise i think consumers can still make uh, decisions by mm. properly uh, like uh, hedging some of their positions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. As the head of marketing, um, how do you help active investors navigate this new world of investing? I think first things first is definitely the education front. Mm. We want them to be aware of all the options that's available for sure. Mm. Um, to like from the most basic things like uh, comparing. Book readers. I think you, if you have seen some of Silly's article, and we also have like uh, Silly reviews where uh, users can come in and, and give a unbiased um, reviews on products. Yes, that, that has been chance. very helpful. Yeah. What have they been saying about movies? Correct. So I'm gonna I, I'm actually gonna jump on that. So last I'm night I actually now. I actually did a bit of research. So Mumu has been doing quite well on Silly reviews apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so good. um, you are at four point yeah. two stars for. Uh, customer support so right. yeah that's that's a very good result good job <laughs> <laughs> correct correct so i think yeah um so back to that uh, first we want to have mm. all these information see now now everybody knows that maybe mubu is the uh, go-to platform if they want uh, proper customer support mm. and uh, mm. good user experience uh, they can make better decisions with regards to the platform that they jump on and then from there uh, they can get educated on some of the uh, knowledge mm. that's happening in the market and of course through our uh, community they can also start discussing some different point of view before really starting to make a decision based on their mm. investments yeah so are variables like customer support and perhaps even commission rates yeah. are those very important factors for active investors yeah i think it is going to be the next big thing actually mm. um if you look at the trend that every, everything is moving, especially with uh, apps. I think user interface, user experience mm, is going to be right. um, the main thing here. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, customer support is definitely something that is uh, highly important, especially with everything regards to money uh, or the amount. As anything that has something to do with money, I think customer support gives that kind of assurance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, I foresee most of these platforms will be competing in that. Uh, spectrum when it comes to active investors the fees that it comes in when you are investing is going to play a huge role I've noticed role. Yeah, correct, on correct. the community forums even yeah. reddit and all that they have mentioned yes. this point and I think hmm, yeah it's it's an interesting one because you're always looking at how can you be the top amongst all that noise right yeah. all these competitors correct. yeah, yeah. Okay. And- that's good how can an active investor prepare for the blow of the market mm-hmm. so yeah we're talking about people who are actively trading here yep i always believe in having a bit of a safety net mm-hmm. before you you know you allocate the rest of your money on uh, more uh, high growth and and slightly riskier uh, stocks so i think for investors right now maybe they can 
uh, rethink some of the companies that they put into. Mm. Maybe they can start looking into uh, slightly more stable and profit making companies with really good track records. Uh, as I mentioned, the the boomer stocks in the past. Some people might want to allocate some of their their assets into uh, more safe haven uh, commodities like gold, uh, mm-hmm. just in case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is that what you meant by safety nets? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That should form the the fundamental of your safety net, and then you can go ahead to invest in your disruptive innovation, your cryptocurrencies and stuff. Right. So it's got to be sort of part of an ecosystem of your investments. Okay. Mm. What is in your personal portfolio? (laughs) (laughs) So you talked about protecting, right? Right, Future long-term goals. So I'm interested to know, what do you have personally? Okay. I'm a bit messy and extreme on on both ends. So (laughs) I have a a rather messy portfolio on the safer side of things and the and, and one on the riskier side. So, I think on the safer side of things, I, I actually have quite an amount maybe in like things like, again, this is not financial advice, uh, things like uh, Singapore savings bonds mm-hmm. and, and your all your various ETFs, mm-hmm. even the STI ETF. Yeah, correct. I, I still have quite high confidence in our current economy and our <laughs> kind of companies. Yeah, and on the other extreme end, mm-hmm. we are looking at things like uh, cryptocurrencies, mm-hmm. uh, NFTs, or even like high disruptive, innovative uh, growth stocks. So I'm actually taking a more forward approach mm-hmm. and trying to spot what is the probably next up and coming trend. So I follow the budget closely and, and there are some hints here and there on what might be the next big thing. Right. Um, and you're talking about the Singapore budget 2020. Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. I really like Singapore's approach towards the whole smart city um, strategies. Yeah. Are you into that? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm quite me into too. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, in terms of your um, target audience at Sydney, um, are they also interested in such topics? I think at least the most immediate thing that they are concerned about is like when's my GST voucher coming in and <laughs> stuff like that. Is there going to be increase in tax? Yes. So I think that's the most immediate one that hits them. Um, but I think on a forward-looking front, um, mm. they are appreciative of a, a few things, right? Mm-hmm, such mm-hmm. as like uh, moving towards electric vehicles. Uh, of course, the car price is going to be taken into account, yes. but then like moving towards that is actually a good move to to really save the environment and all. And the Singapore budget now really um, helping Singaporeans recover from uh, what's happening uh, during the COVID mm-hmm. pandemic. I think mm-hmm. these are these are things that at least on the community front mm-hmm. they are really appreciative. Right. Of course, there is a group of really savvy active investors who'll be like hmm what should I be investing in and then they start looking at and really deep diving into some of the mm. companies that are Singaporean active investors also interested in our positioning um, in Asia Pacific or are they pretty much centered around topics in, locally mm. so I think uh, really thanks to all the online book mm. now everything is like um, so easy you know right. it's so easy to assess to different markets like mm. in the past even investing in, I remember when I when I wanted to invest in like US stocks, I needed a few out of form, and <laughs> bring down to a to a branch to to really. But right now, have most most of the things can be done on the app. Yeah, so definitely uh, the ease of access, the convenience is going to encourage everyone to look at a more holistic portfolio than just uh, keeping it to Singapore stocks mm. itself. Yeah. Do you get a lot of young investors? Yeah, there is. Right. Uh, yeah. Correct. So Sydney Fest is targeted at young active investors too. Correct. Right? So there is a whole range. There are some that wants to get started on investing, mm. and there are some who have been probably following Sydney or or reading up on investing related topics for the longest time. They also consist of you know eighteen year olds onwards, Gen Z, or yep. what's the demographic at the moment? Mm. So I think we are seeing a, a moving trend where they are starting to. Uh, dip their toes in the water at a really young age mm. and they start they, they even buy their first shares or first cryptocurrency mm. uh, through uh, all this fintech and online platform right yeah so the, that's generally a uh, younger trend now and that, that which is great because um, we should always start investing early yeah correct so that's a trend we are realizing and then we will have also noticed that people are getting uh, better at investing every day mm. because of the, the amount of knowledge that's available online Mm -hmm. the idea of retiring early Mm -hmm. or it can be as simple as just wanting to make more money out of whatever they have at the moment of course i believe when they uh, grow and they will realize that there's actually a bigger picture to it right like planning for your uh, 
uh, next generation planning for the future and how what what does uh, the fire movement even mean yes yeah. 100% i think that's a recurring topic yeah. that we we talk about um and i think people are really redefining that for themselves and i think it's here to stay <laughs> ming feng i've got a few questions from the community sounds good <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, it's just two key questions um, that they'll like to to know from you. So the first one, what is your personal investment strategy? I think we covered a little bit about your portfolio yeah. just now, but in terms of your long term strategy and goals. Mm. So maybe I'll share a bit about what I didn't do so well. So okay. I, I, yeah, yes. correct. So I think <laughs> um, okay, I, as mentioned just now, I, my strategy is more on this method we call it the barbell method which, where, where we have like assets allocated on both ends mm. both very extreme spectrum of uh things mm. uh, when it comes to risk but i think that something that i didn't really do so well last year which i'm going to improve this year is that i'm going to probably re-optimize the portfolio once so well instead of letting that uh sit in the long term and, and, and let it assume that everything will grow over time uh so Portfolio optimization is really important. You need to go in and check in once in a while. Take the profit or take some of the losses that, that uh, so to readjust your portfolio back to where you uh, want it to be initially. Mm. Correct. So that's, that's my strategy for this year. Putting quite a bit more in the riskier side of things and also investing in the future of um, some of the, the up and coming trends that I, I believe will dominate the world, maybe. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that. Um, the next question is about new economy. So people would love to know, um, do you really think concepts like the metaverse are um, concepts that are worth investing in? Actually, I have a bit of mixed feeling with regards to that. Mm. What does it really look like, uh, especially now with COVID recovering? Is that still going to be part of the the theme? I think that part, I'm still a bit unsure. Right. But I'm, I'm definitely keen to invest in the future so all these like futurist concepts right um because you target singaporeans so for singaporean active investors what is what is the motivation for them to be a part of of such concepts or local teams they, mm. they, singapore somehow is a sort of like a follower when it comes to uh, execution of various policies mm. maybe uh, they want to see that he's yes work somewhere else so take note that when that uh, kind of policy gets implemented here is probably being well calculated and mm. it has already been uh, implemented somewhere else. A good example, like I mentioned just now, electric vehicles, that is definitely more on the, on the looking at the brands that are creating, like your Tesla, your Neo, uh, all these companies, instead mm. of trying to find that gem locally. I think there's a lot of capital coming in for the space, right? Yep. You've got even the plant setting up for Hyundai. Correct. Upcoming, and I think it's going to increase the level of competition. Excited for what the future. I mean, holds. with competition comes better <laughs> things for the consumer. Yeah. I think. yeah. And we're we're perfect for that in Correct. Singapore. Correct. Just sit and wait and choose the best one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think really to understand what you're investing. So I think at least during COVID, we we noticed a, a very funny trend. I'm not sure whether you you've seen that. So during COVID, I probably have. <laughs> yeah, COVID period, all over social media, everyone's like shouting yeah. their their profit, their stocks. Mm. I made so much money. I mean, I invested in this cryptocurrency. I made so much money. Yes. And then now when the market is having the longest dip, there was like no sound, nothing. So <laughs> I think <your> most <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So I think most importantly, you need to know that uh, you are investing in the longer term and really only buy companies that you believe in than just uh, going with the hype. Mm. Uh, really, really invest in something that you 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 believe in and that way you know that uh, that portfolio is truly yours. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ming Feng, for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Olivia. I look forward to seeing you soon. Yes, and also the upcoming Sydney Fest. That's something very exciting. Yep, I will see everyone on 23rd and 24th <laughs> of April. Thank you so much to our viewers for joining us for this episode on the future of personal finance. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below because I would always love to know what you think. I'm Olivia Higgins, and we'll see you next time. Bye.